especially the amino acids. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel, I'm a third year biomedical science student, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys tips on how to start off your MCAT prep. Now this is gonna be the first video in my MCAT prep series, so if you really enjoy the content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. With that said, let's get right to it. The biggest consideration before you even start planning your studying is when are you gonna take your MCAT exam? Now this will depend on when you're planning on to apply to medical school. Keep in mind that the MCAT exam scores do have an expiration, so you don't want to take your exam too, too early. At the same time, you do want to take it early enough in the event that you need to retake the exam. For me personally, I took the MCAT August 2021, which was fall of my junior year. This was a little earlier than my peers, who mostly took it spring of their junior year, but I wanted to make sure that I had adequate time to retake the exam if needed. Another thing to consider before taking your MCAT exam is if you've taken all the prerequisite courses. Common classes include two semesters of biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, and physics. Biochemistry is a highly recommended course as many of the concepts covered in the MCAT will delve into biochemistry, especially the amino acids. Other classes I recommend include genetics and physiology. I especially recommend physiology because this class tremendously helped me on my MCAT study. And not only is it relevant for the MCAT, but the material and the concepts applied will definitely show up in medical school yeah. down the road. This isn't to say that if you haven't taken some of these courses, you shouldn't take the MCAT. With MCAT studying, it's important to know yourself and know what you're comfortable with. If you have prior experience with topics like orgo or physics, then by all means, go for it and self-study. A lot of the prep books cover the material really well and focus on those big concepts. If you're comfortable with orgo and physics, these are also good subjects to self-study on because the percentage of questions that come from these topics are very small compared to topics like biochemistry and biology. When scheduling your MCAT exam, you want to consider things such as your coursework, work, research, and any other obligations you may have. It's important to prioritize MCAT studying because ideally you want to take this exam once and not have to worry about it ever again. I had this experience when I tried to study too early for my MCAT, so it was clashing with my coursework, and in the end, I maybe read like one chapter from a Kaplan book. You definitely want to make sure that you're prioritizing your MCAT prep and putting it at the forefront instead of the back burner. Another thing to consider is how long are you gonna spend studying for your MCAT? This will also depend on how comfortable you are individually with the material. Personally, I spent around four months studying for my MCAT, but there's definitely something to say about striking a good balance between having enough time and not spending too much time on MCAT prep. Keep in mind that this exam is compressing four years of undergraduate education into one <laughs> exam. So you definitely want to make sure that you're putting enough time and effort into studying for the MCAT, especially since this will be a big factor in your medical school application. At the same time, you don't want to start studying for your MCAT a year before the exam, as having too much time just can be counterproductive. From my personal experience, I blocked off the summer as dedicated MCAT studying time. This was really nice because I didn't have any other coursework or obligations, and I contributed all my energy to pouring myself into MCAT prep. At the same time, I realized I was really lucky by starting my MCAT prep early. So if you're in a situation where you can't block off summer or a gap year for MCAT studying, do be mindful of planning your MCAT prep in a semester where you don't have too many obligations, as well as consider dropping some of your obligations or extracurriculars to focus on MCAT study. Now it's time to actually schedule your exam. I dedicated a day specifically for registering for the MCAT exam. The day that my classes for the spring semester ended, I got on my computer, got on the AMC system, and registered myself for the exam. So why is this important? Well, first off, spots fill up fast, so it's important to make sure that you've secured your seat at your desired location, date, and time. The last thing you want is to be stuck at a location two hours away from you at 3.30 p.m., especially if you're not an afternoon test taker. Typically, a lot of my peers chose to spend winter break studying, so January slots filled up super fast. So you want to make sure, at minimum, that you're getting the right date and location that works best for you. Scheduling your exam is also important because it puts you in a concrete mindset for studying for the exam. If you don't register for your exam, you may end up in a situation where you're constantly putting off the test date month after month after month and not feeling ready. By registering for the exam, you're setting a concrete date that you can work towards. Once you've scheduled your exam, it's time to start planning your studying. Now I can't stress enough 
Organization is key. Starting from day one, you need to have a clear idea of how you're gonna approach your MCAT studying. Now this is really important, and for me, I even dedicated a whole day to organizing how I was gonna study for the MCAT. Not only does this set a clear path for your MCAT studying, but it's a tremendous way to reduce the stress. The MCAT exam is a super big exam, and there's so many resources out there, so it can often feel overwhelming to not know where you're gonna start. Trust me on this one. Start planning your MCAT exam, and you're gonna feel that stress level drop. Not only is organization important for the MCAT, but for life and studying in general. So it's important to develop a good habit of keeping yourself organized and on track. It's also important to strike a good balance between being organized enough, but not too organized. You don't want to regiment and restrict yourself to planning out every single minute of every day because this is a recipe for disaster and I can tell you right now, there's no way that you can fully accomplish every single thing that you plan out. And this creates an environment of discouragement, which is the last thing we want for everyone. Your schedule will definitely vary and look different depending on personal preference. For me, I prefer to use paper to plan my events. Electronic options offer more flexibility, so make sure to choose the option that's gonna work the best for you. I chose to break my MCAT prep planning down into two categories, monthly highlights and daily highlights. I spent four months studying for the MCAT, so for each month, I set a monthly highlight. For example, for the first month, I focused on content review. The second month, I focused on practice questions. The third month, I focused on practice exams. And the fourth month, I highlighted strengthening and working on my weaknesses, as well as optimizing any other thing I needed to before the exam. My daily highlight is something I also do on a regular basis, and this involves setting one thing as your goal of the day. So for example, if my goal of the day was to finish 120 practice questions, that would be my daily highlight. By doing this, you're prioritizing getting one single thing done, so you're focusing all your mental energy on finishing this one thing. I'll be making more videos going more in depth into how my MCAT schedule looked, so stay tuned for those. Some more scheduling tips that I want to highlight is that your schedule will change. We're human beings and there's always going to be some events that pop out out of the unexpected, so make sure to work in days in your schedule for these unexpected events. I can't stress enough how important it is to work in days for rest, relaxation, and downtime. As important as it is to study, it's also important to prioritize time to stop, slow down, and allow your brain to consolidate and process this information. If you're constantly bombarding your brain with so much MCAT info, chances are a lot of this info isn't gonna slip through. So make sure you plan in time to relax and rejuvenate yourself so that you're physically and mentally in the right mindset. Another thing that was really helpful in my life was having out all of the resources that I was gonna use for my MCAT prep. Now this comes back to having a dedicated day where I was planning out my MCAT setting. This day included making a list of all the resources I knew I wanted to use for my MCAT prep. For example, I knew I was gonna for sure use the AMC official materials. And knowing what exactly are included in those materials helped me to properly space out what materials I was gonna use on what day. And my last important note about where to start for the MCAT is know what kind of exam you're studying for. Now it's easy to get caught up in the classic pre-med worry of not covering all the content, but it's super important to note that the MCAT is not purely a content-based exam. The MCAT is passage-based. What do I mean by passage-based? The MCAT is going to give you passages with novel information that you most likely haven't seen before. It's going to ask you to apply concepts that have been covered in your MCAT prep to these novel questions. With that in mind, it's important to caution yourself against the common mistake of spending too much time on content. The key to MCAT prep is going to be practice questions. So make sure when you're reading through your prep books not to stress too much on taking so many notes on minute details that most likely won't show up on test day. I found it really helpful to take a diagnostic starting from day one just so you know the format and the interface of the exam and exactly what you're up against and what you need to be studying for. And with that, I send you guys off with some of my most important tips for MCAT studying prep. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and comment if you have any tips you'd like to share for MCAT prep. Stay tuned for more videos in this series, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!